conversation with Josh. Just settle in and get some music over. We'll uh, start a conversation here. with uh, Josh and Sandra and some uh, opportunities for people in this audience tonight to take action as early as tomorrow. Because if we don't take action in a couple of weeks, the door could be opened in Illinois for all the things you just saw in the movie. So let me uh, once again thank Josh and turn it over to him. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing reaction to the film. Thank you so much. So listen, um, we're very lucky this evening to have in the, we're gonna do question and answer. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the situation in Illinois right now. And we're gonna try to, you know, in situations like this, you really just wanna go out with the whole audience to a bar and have fun. <laughs> but why don't we just do that in about t 10 hours in Springfield tomorrow morning um, <laughs> and take that this party over there, you know, to your capital. But be before we get into all that um, and start taking questions, I want to introduce to you um, uh, two people who are, are very, very dear to me um, who are, in, and, 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 and we're going to be conducting this sort of as a dialogue with Illinois People's Action and with SAFE, who are here, the uh, Southern, Southern, Illinois Southern, Fracturing. Southern Illinois Against Fracturing Our Environment. Our environment. Great. Um, and just have this dialogue about how we can get active here. Um, but I want to introduce to you one of my uh, personal heroes, um, Dr. Sandra Steingraber, um, who is from Illinois. I don't know how best to introduce her. She has um, been fighting the gas industry with New Yorkers against fracking, with Americans against fracking. Um, she's an incredible writer and advocate and, 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 and a master of words, and I'm just so inspired that she's here. She's going to tell you a little bit about how she's actually from here, in short, tonight. I also wanted to just welcome up on the stage a man who helped enormously in Arkansas, um, who's here tonight who um, took me to all those people who were having a problem with earthquakes, who is a great organizer and, and activist and also like a kind of psychic fish finder, if you ever want to go trout fishing. You know? <laughs> so it's like, it's right there. And that's Robert Finney. So just come on up here, Robert Finney. Because um, this, this is one of the people who is in this film. He's behind the camera, but he can tell you all about what it's like to be in the middle of it. And, and, incredibly dense frack zone. I also wanted to welcome up Annette McMichael. Are you coming? Great. Who spoke at the press conference this afternoon, who um, uh, is in really in the target zone right now to talk to you about the issues that she's facing here in Southern Illinois. So we're going to talk a bit here, but we really want this to be a dialogue. And before we leave tonight, um, if we can possibly think about the way that we always enter movies or gatherings as individuals or as groups or as, you know, maybe you brought a date. It is like, a, it's a date movie. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, but why don't we try to leave as a group? Why don't we try to leave as groups of people who come from different places in Illinois to, to, to have a sense, because there's no way you can take on the gas industry as an individual. There's no way, I mean, you have to be organized and working with your neighbors and working with the people who you, you see every single day. Um, and those are the people in your community, there are also maybe people across the state, and we're here just to say, we're in that club. If there's one positive thing that's come out of all of this, it is this incredible, vast, big family of people from all over the United States, a community of people from all over the United States that know what 
the meaning of democracy is. As John Fenton, I took John Fenton to Pennsylvania, he gave a speech, uh, I said, just do 10 minutes of this speech that I was giving. And he came out and he said the most astounding thing, he said, in America, you matter, but you have to make yourself matter. It was almost like an oxymoron. It's like, you know, you have rights, but you have to declare that you have them. And in this situation, you matter because you do. And your communities matter, the character of your communities matter, your values matter, who you are matters. But unless you go down to Springfield and make yourself matter, unless you make what your desires are known and your rights known and the things that are important um, to all of us as we talk about going into the future known, you won't matter. The oil and gas industry will get to your representatives first. We're seeing the same situation in Illinois as we're seeing in Pennsylvania with this fracking and the revolving door. We're seeing the the state agencies that are here to represent you, to protect you as citizens, your health, your environment, your air, your water, being captured by the industry, being captured by their influence. And that, that is not acceptable in America, in, in, in the 21st century, in, in this democracy. But again, we have to make ourselves matter to be able to do that. So we're going to give you some instructions about how to do that as soon as possible. And before we get into all these amazing people and what they're going to be able to say to you. I want you to know that it's tomorrow morning at 6.45, people are meeting here and doing carpools, right? And we're, we're going to... At the IPA office. At the IPA office, not here at the theater. But we're going, to, we're going to be trying to get you, if you can't get down to Springfield, to get to Springfield, you know? And sometimes, you know, like when we were doing this thing with DC, like I wanted to take this hearing. I said, we have to go, we don't, we're waiting on pending permission. I do not want to get arrested. I do not want to have this happen. It was a colossal bummer. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to say, you know what, I'm going to cancel tomorrow morning. What I have, I'm going to try. I'm going to figure it out. And if you're not in that position, maybe you can call somebody to be in, or your representative. Because I guarantee you, this group of people right here would have been a huge rally in New York in 2009 at the beginning of all this. It was groups of people like this many people that we first had in Albany. Am I right? And that grew to thousands. But this many people could make a change going down to Springfield. So um, I'll be there. I'm excited. Sort of not a morning person, but I'm going to be there. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let me just have these people say uh, some things, and then we'll all try to take these questions together. But before you leave tonight, if you didn't hear it when we announced it, because we want to satisfy the audience requirement of Q&A and do that in the proper way. But if you didn't hear how to get down to Springfield before you leave, Find someone who knows how to do Is there people at the, at the table who know? Okay, we're gonna give those instructions out because I'm really pleading with you right now. We are in a dire, dire, dire emergency situation in Illinois, and it's gonna affect us all over the nation. Sandra and I have been up till four o'clock in the morning for the last month talking to people, trying to get this situation, trying to get a moratorium. And we're at a conclusion right now where we really need to have citizen impact in front of these legislators and in front of people and say, listen, you don't know what you're talking about. We're here, we live here. Don't do this to us. So, all right, that's my spiel. Um, and I want to have each of these wonderful people just give a, a, a few comments. Um, and then we're gonna take questions, is that cool? Terrific, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Sandra Steingraber. I think we all know each other. Uh, so this is my home. I've, I've come here from uh, New York State where I lived the second half of my life First of all, half of my life has lived right here. So in, in this audience, I have members of my family, including my mother, and my literary theory professor sitting behind the guy I now work with in New York. I have my undergraduate uh, writing professor, um, and his wife is head of the Ecology Action Center. So between all these people, um, I am right where I came from, um, including um, someone I want to introduce you, fellow Illinois, um, native Carolyn Raffensperger, who I want to see you to stand up so you can see her because I think you might want to talk to her later on. Carolyn is an environmental attorney. <laughs> I sat on her board for many years. She was um, the head of the Illinois um, Sierra Club and the Illinois Environmental Council um, uh, long ago before they did some things that put us in our present dire situation. So I'm just gonna be really straight up with you about our situation. 
Um, you've been dealt a very bad hand in Illinois by people who should be your friends, by people who belong to um, big national environmental organizations that have really good reputations um, and have uh, cachet. And I'm talking about the, the Na uh, National Resources, Natural Resources Defense Council and the Sierra Club and the Illinois Environmental Council. With these organizations who did, under the direction of uh, Lisa Madigan, uh, State's Attorney General, is sit down behind closed doors with industry and broker a bill, a regulatory bill, that would serve as the starting gun, the green light to bring fracking to Illinois. Right. No one in this room had the ability to be part of those conversations. And so now there's a very bad bill that's being raced through uh, the uh, State House in Springfield, and absent our intervention, will open this state up to everything that you just saw on the screen. So there's no more important thing that you could be doing with your life tomorrow than to come with us to Springfield and stand to say, not in my name, that's not what we want, that's not democracy. The other thing that you need to know, is that it's happening differently in other places. So where I now live in New York, not only do we have a voice by having many public hearings, so that when our state attempted to promulgate regulations um, in advance of the science being done, as you heard in the film, we sent 204,000 public comments to the governor's office pointing out everything that was wrong with that approach and everything that was wrong with these regulations. Um, and in so doing, we, we buried those regulations. They're, they're now dead. Um, and, and we did that through citizen action. The regulations that we killed off were actually better regulations than what you have here. So you've been dealt a very bad hand. Um, but all is not lost. Um, that's what they told us in, Illinois, in New York. Um, we refuse to believe that that was the case, um, and um, and so we fight on, and our story isn't over yet. Um, but I think for me, fighting in New York, it's not just that New Yorkers have this kind of no fracking way attitude, right? Um, you have some of the same determination and perseverance that we have in New York, and I feel like I'm animated every day by things that I learned here in the state. And some of you were here with me a couple of years ago when my story of being a cancer survivor in the film Living Down the Stream was shown on the same, in the same theater to the same packed house. My favorite wine from that film um, is from my mom, who I think stole that scene, when she said, as a cancer patient, we, my mom and I were, you know, I was adopted, we're not genetically related, very close emotionally. We had cancer at the same time together. She was in her mid-40s, I was 20. And in the, during those dark days, the one thing that she always said to me was, don't let them bury you until you're dead. That was my motto of my mom. That became my motto. And so I think about that every day when I'm out there fighting the gas industry. Um, you're not dead. This bill hasn't passed. And as long as it hasn't passed, there's a chance for there to be hope. So my message tomorrow in Springfield will be as a biologist. And what I would like to say, and what I'm going to say tomorrow when I testify and when I speak at the press conference is this. You cannot regulate something when you don't know what you're regulating. We have never done the science to know what environmental impact this will have on Illinois and what health impact it will have on all of us. We don't know what people are exposed to when you frack. We don't know by what routes of exposure um, you're exposed. So how can we come up with a set of rules to mitigate all this and claim that these are going to be sufficiently protective when we don't know what you're being exposed to and we don't even know what we're protecting you from? So until you do the science to find out in places where fracking has unfortunately already unrolled, do a, a comprehensive health impact assessment on, um, on in states where fracking has already happened, you are conducting an uncontrolled human experiment on the population of Illinois. And that's still wrong. That's still wrong. So that will be my message tomorrow in Springfield, but each of you has a message to bring. And this is, the, this is what I always say when I exhort people to get on the bus with me to go to Albany. You know, Albany is a big state, just like New York, uh, Illinois. It's eight hours from New York City to, to Buffalo. So ask people to come to our 
capital, which just like Springfield is right in the middle of the state, we ask people to get up at 3.30 in the morning and get on buses with us. And what I often say to people is there's no more important job that you can do right now than to protect your air and your water and your health and your children's future. So I want you to get on that bus with me. And the only thing more important than you might have to do is if you have a chemotherapy appointment. And if you do have a chemotherapy, use the hand that you're not hooked up to your chemo drip to write a letter to your governor. That's the serious uh, uh, commitment I expect from the city's reading, because that, if we don't have that kind of fierce resolve, we're really not going to win. But when you're a cancer survivor, you bring that kind of fierce resolve, and all of us in this room have that somewhere, and that's what I really urge you to join me tomorrow in Springfield. And, and, and we can win this, but it is the 11th hour, and we're fighting from a very bad uh, situation and we need to turn it around, and, we, and we're going to go all out to do this. So I'll see you there. Very, very quickly, Josh wanted me to tell you what, I'm say, what I am telling the, the uh, reporters at the press conference tomorrow. I've spent the last 10 months of my life attempting to prove that forced pooling is alive and well in Illinois. And it looks like I'm about to become a victim in Johnson County if this regulatory bill passes. Forced pooling is the act of being forced by state law into participation in an oil or gas producing unit. Industry can create a unit of any size that it wants and if 51% of the people in that district or unit sign leases, then everyone else is forced to sign a lease. We have no choice. What that means is that landowners who are in a forced pooling unit no longer have any property rights. I can have somebody come and put a well on my property without my permission and I can be arrested if I try to stop them. The landman who sent me the sample lease down in Johnson County agreed that I was right. Two attorneys have agreed that I was right. And the Attorney General's office sent me one sentence in a statement on that. It said, the statement said, the people of Illinois need a lot of educating in this manner, in this matter. So forced pooling is eminent domain for corporate gain, and I'm not going to stop fighting for my constitutional rights and your constitutional rights in this state. Because even though this is starting in southern Illinois, they're going to be crashing for oil all over the state, and they're right in your backyard. Southern Illinois, I was at a Johnson County meeting, town meeting, hall meeting about a week and a half ago, and the people there were overwhelmingly in support of the moratorium, 90% I would say. And I can guarantee you that nobody in Southern Illinois thinks somebody else should be able to come on your land without permission. Down in Southern Illinois, we respect people's no trespassing signs. So that's not the way it's done down there, and I really appreciate the folks being here tonight, and thank you very much, and hope to see you tomorrow. Hi, I'm uh, Robert Finney. Um, in Arkansas, we had no idea what was coming. We actually thought there was going to be a pipe out in our field that was going to mail us a, a, a nice fat paycheck every month. And we didn't know anything about pipelines. We didn't know anything about frack pits, compressor stations, uh, just all of these things. And they just kind of rolled in on us, and here we, here we are. And the deals with the state legislators and, and the national legislators, those were all made a long time before we ever found out anything at all was <laughs> I mean, they already had everything in place, and y'all are at a point now where you need to get out and do a little bit of activism, even if it's Facebook, Twitter, talking to your neighbors, um, go outside your comfort zone, start going to some permit hearings, ask questions, send your legislators emails or, or even paper mail and tell them how you feel because otherwise they're going to say well everybody said you know we want this if you don't tell them that you don't want it so just get out and do something and that's all you can do and make some noise mm -hmm.
Okay, so before we take a few uh, questions, I'd like to ask Dawn, you have some procedural matters, right, about tomorrow and, and details. So, uh, and I think, did everybody get one of these sheets? Or we have some of these people with sheets? Have these been passed out yet? No. Okay. okay. Can you, um, let's pass, down the aisle maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a first question while we're passing these sheets out. These are going to give you information about tomorrow and information about um, what's going on in the state of Illinois uh, with the strategy, I guess, isn't that right? And the, and the hearings for tomorrow. All right, here's a question right there, the blue yeah, shirt. Yeah, um, And you can ask questions of any of us, but. started with a statement. We got stabbed in the back by EOS, EOS e NRDC, NRDC ELBC. ELBC, and Sierra Club, the big environmental organizations. And they are in fact um, participating in this process of creating regulations, which both Sandra and I believe are totally unsupportable from the standpoint of morality, from the standpoint of science, from the standpoint of all the reporting that we see. And unfortunately, yes, it's true, we may face a battle also against the big greens, not just uh, the gas industry. And we have been doing negotiations and trying to get them to move off of that for about three and a half weeks. You know, or more than, actually a lot longer than that in some cases. We're outraged about it. And we find that, you know, there is no reason why that should occur from the standpoint of science or morality. What they said to us, I will tell you, or to me. There isn't a significant grassroots movement in Illinois against fracking, like we have in New York. In New York, we were able to pressure those organizations successfully and work and do this sort of dance with them, where we were saying we need to have a ban, and then they would come and help with some kind of a delay, and then we would have a ban, and they would do a delay, and they would ban. And the people in New York and NRDC and Sierra Club were actually quite brilliant about helping us with that. And we had space to operate. You want to know the answer that I, I do not know what's going on in their minds. I know that I can't support it. And I do not know that they are, that they won't lose their credibility as true environmental organizations in Illinois doing this, and maybe nationally. Um, I'm very, very upset with it. And, you know, <laughs> what is the logic, what is the reasoning? We don't know. Where have they done it elsewhere? Well, here's the thing. The fracking movement came along concurrently with this vast threat across America. I was one of millions upon millions of people getting that knock at the door. The first film, it's a great, nice film that I like. I made it. But Citizen Kane couldn't have made the movement that we're seeing right now. The movement is because this is a crisis. And it's because it's invading people all over the United States. And I think that gave a new life to a lot of organizations that needed clout and needed people in the streets to get wise and go out there and do things. And that invasion of people has created an opportunity for us to insist. And where we can insist, we, we must. You know, because, look, as a member of a frontline community myself, I know that no amount of regulations would help me with a well pad on the other side of that stream. I know that there would not help at all, because I know this industry cannot be regulated. I know that there is no way that you can make this kind of drilling and fracking safe from any standpoint, whether it's groundwater contamination or air pollution or health crisis or workers. I know that regulations do not comfort me. In fact, we threatened to take over with a huge act of civil disobedience that we had 10 or so a thousand people signed up to do in the Delaware River Basin. We won in the Delaware River Basin because of that threat. I know that we did. So what we're talking about here is reaching out not only to those legislators and, and, and embarrassing them and making them understand that what they're doing is relinquishing human rights and selling out human rights to multinational corporations who would exploit Illinois and the citizenship of Illinois 
and sell those things overseas for profit and disappear. And they're taking those priorities as greater than yours, the citizens of the United States. And anyone who stands with that effort is also doing that, in my opinion. And, and it's hard for me not to get passionate and emotional and, and, and upset about it. But the truth of the matter is, none of that really matters. What matters is that we exhibit a different level of democracy here. And you know, we have a plan tonight. The most common question on the Gasland tour is, well, what can we do? Well, guess what? You don't have to ask that question here because we know tomorrow we can do something. And beyond that, it's about being involved and coming back and coming back and coming back again. But like, let me tell you something. It's one of the more meaningful things I've ever done in my entire life to go out there and encounter true American pride and spirit and patriotism and, and community. These things that you don't think exist anymore. Everybody's talking about, oh, we're always looking at our phone. We're always looking at the Facebook. We're always looking at why we don't have community. Well, guess what? In the fracking movement, we have something real. And it's very exciting and it's wonderful to be a part of. So even though your back's against the wall and you're taking on the largest corporations in the history of corporations, there is something very, very positive about that experience. So I, we want NRDC and Sierra Club and the other one that you mentioned to get with the program or get out of the way. Because they're taking that seat at the table, to be honest, and we need to be sitting there. And, I, and if anyone wants to elaborate on that, okay, now we have these things signed up. Right, okay, uh, one of the things that we're talking about tomorrow is fighting this bad regulation bill down in, uh, in Springfield and standing for a moratorium. So you all got a handout on a sheet of paper of some things you can do. So uh, Illinois People's Action Office is at 510 East Washington Street. It's the old Bloomington Junior High. Before that, it was the old Bloomington High School. Meet in room 205 at 645 in the morning if you don't have a ride. If you've got a ride and you've, you can organize that with the people that you're sitting around and you can come to Springfield, you can meet in the Capitol in room 114 at nine in the morning for the hearing. So the first thing is the hearing at nine in the morning that Josh and Sandra and other people in this room are signed up to talk at. This is important. The second thing, at 10 o'clock, assuming the hearing happens, because lots of times they'll poll them at the last minute, but assuming the hearing happens and we can testify, at 10 we're gonna have a press conference. And you'll get to hear, again, some of the people here, plus more people, grassroots people on the ground, folks from Chicago, folks from SAFE, and, in southern Illinois, folks from central Illinois. We're all working together to stop this. So come and show support. And then the third thing you can do is you can go home tonight and register your opposition to this bad bill. Now unfortunately, when we wrote these instructions, which are very complex, we left out an important step. So everybody get your pencil out of your purse or your pocket right now, and we're gonna walk you through just a couple changes so that you can register your opposition. If you're going tomorrow, you can do this in person. It's called slipping uh, opposition. You know, we're not gonna slip support for the bill. We wanna oppose it, so. But about two thirds of the way down the sheet you just got, where it says scroll to page two and find SB 1715. Can everybody find that on your sheet? Okay. What you need to do is actually, there's two lines. One says SB 1715, and then underneath it says SB 1715 8-HCA-1. So add on your sheet, look for HCA-1. That is the bad amendment that they wrapped this entire bill in. They sn they're sneaking it in under the carpet. What they did is they, they passed a shell bill out of the Senate, they moved it into the House, they put this amendment on the shell bill, and what the amendment is is this entirely bad fracking bill that's gonna open the door for fracking in the state. So you're gonna look for that. Then it'll tell you how to fill out the form, and uh, so where it says fill out the form, then there's a Roman numeral one, two, and three. Three, it says your position on the bill, IPA is recommending opposition, on the bill, what you need to do there is to select, once again, HCA-1 to indicate your position. Not just the whole bill, it's the amendment that we really want attention to, HCA-1. And we hope that you will represent 
that you oppose this bill. And as I said, you can do this in person, and we hope that you will come with us tomorrow and stand with uh, all of us here. And let me turn it back to Josh. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. I couldn't understand what you were saying. HBA-1, which is more clear about that. Yeah, just look for the letters H. C C A H C A dash one. Those that's the letter that you're looking for. Okay? Thanks. All right. Um, let's take another question for my, myself or, or for Sandra. Right here. Sure. I'm gonna do further back. Sure. The EPA study is coming out soon. A lot of things, uh, legislatively, a lot of arguments get tied to the EPA's uh, groundwater study. Um, <clears throat> what I've found, and things reported more extensively than we can cover in a two-hour film, is it's true EPA it has um, uh, exhibited a willingness to bend to industry um, and alter what they're doing. We don't know how, um, and we've had to fight a lot of those battles. Tony and Graffia, has been in touch with Glenn Paulson, who is the science advisor of EPA about these cement issues, and he has given presentations. He was one out of seven people on a panel to give those presentations. A lot of the rest of them were industry. So, you know, here's what we know, what we do know. Here's what worked, right? We keep saying this over and over again, but it's really the only thing. Where we have a, a chance is in creating this democratic movement and insisting. You know, in New York, we got a regulatory regime, the first one, the first draft environmental impact study, actually had a chart in the middle of it, which was um, like a pie chart, and at the bottom of it, it had a Chesapeake logo. It was from the gas industry, it was literally put inside of the regulatory bill. And it showed the influence. And I pointed it out during a public hearing. I said, you guys are as bad at proofreading as you are at writing, writing regulations. You left the, the logo in. It's on page 804. You know, there is, there, there are people up all night.